may not be suitable for all audiences. I am Knobben Knudsen for Swedish Television One, and tonight we are going to examine the American craze. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Berger. <laughs> Scholars, welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I am a professional artist and a master educator, and I attempt to provide the best in our historical content. If you like the content, make sure you like, share, subscribe, share it with your partners, neighbors, whatever, and uh, also, subscriptions really help. There's always the pungent odor of life's constipation that surreptitiously conflicts. As you know, I like to dabble in different art historical type stories. Today we're going to look at the ancient Romans and explore how they used the facilities. Restroom habits. These things can be the topic of a lot of conversation and for some reason sometimes it gets to be topical news I guess. But today I want to focus on the beginnings of this. This very personal behavior that we all do and was very much a part of the routine of the ancient Romans just as much as it is modern day citizens. Shut up you miserable bloody Romans. No sense of humor. It was first discovered by recognizing a long marble bench that had a series of holes cut into the marble. These holes were cut pretty close together, so archaeologists began to wonder what these holes were actually used for. If one was to sit on one of these holes and use it as we might use modern day facilities, you'd basically be sitting hip to hip next to somebody else doing their private business. There's no dividers, there's no privacy, just a hole potentially next to dozens of other folks also doing their business. A lot of times these were fashioned with stone seats unless you get into northern Europe where they would have been more constructed out of wood because that was more available but also you get into the colder climates you're going to want to sit on a plank of wood not a slab of marble. Side note, the word latrine in Latin used to describe a private toilet in someone's home usually constructed over a chest pit. Well that's a very offensive way to put it. The Roman Empire lasted for thousands of years and stretched from Africa to the British Isles, so the habits of one's personal matters would very much be varied depending upon where you lived geographically and during what time you were living there. But generally speaking, the Roman individual had a lot fewer inhibitions than people do today. They were pretty cool with sitting in close quarters, basically people all around them, essentially doing their business in a communal setting. This was a place where men could do business while they were doing their business. These accommodations were pretty much designed for men, although there are some conflicting reports that women may have used them, although it's certainly possible that these were not gender-exclusive facilities. The more wealthy individuals had their own private accommodations, but most of the working business class type folks would have been here. They could have discussed various things and so forth. These public toilets were oftentimes attached to a public bath. I've touched on these before, so you can go back and take a look at that content, but essentially that wastewater from those baths were used to flush down the filth. The wealthiest members of society would have hired Stercori, who would have been utilized in removing the manure from the various facility pits and emptying those into other pits. There were some agricultural repurposing of human feces, although when you're looking at a major metro area, this would have been a lot of human refuse, and so there would have been an advantage to a sewage removal system this was an idea that was originally developed by the Hellenistic Greeks and then approved upon by the innovative Romans. Moving millions of gallons of water and waste every single day, they drained extra water and various runoffs and swamp type areas into the Tiber River. There was a ton of money spent making sure this was maintained because it was such an important part of keeping everything sanitary in the city. 
And you're looking at an area that was accustomed to having earthquakes and floods and various forms of catastrophe. And so they were putting a lot of money to make sure that the system was running smoothly. When some of these weren't cleaned out properly, there was a buildup of hydrogen sulfide and methane gases that would combust. And it was not uncommon for there to be a fireball shooting out of these things. And that, my friends, would not have been a lot of fun. Side note. A lot of times these sorts of facilities would have been decorated with the goddess Fortuna, who was customary for good luck and good fortune. For whatever reason, there is a lot of her imagery in these areas. Basher! Thrasher! Crusher! And... Smasher! Smasher? No, where'd you get that? Fireball! Cat! You'll also notice that there's a hole on the top and a hole on the side. This was used for sitting on, but also cleaning yourself when you were finished. How did they take care of cleaning themselves? Well, essentially what they would do is take a sea sponge and attach it to a stick. By some accounts, the sponge would either be saturated in water or vinegar, and that dampened sponge would be used as a mop to clean your backside after they were done doing their business that there would be some sort of a running water system for them to wash their hands off but it's possible that they didn't these devices would have been used over and over not just cleaning one person and being discarded but being used by multiple people over multiple days so the spread of intestinal worms and other such things was somewhat common because really, at that time, the Romans didn't understand how these diseases were spread. And by today's standards, you could hardly call this sort of thing hygienic or even in the neighborhood, not even in the state of having good hygiene. And these public baths and toilet areas were far from glamorous. I mean, white marble looks really cool now, but back in the day, this would have stunk. It would have been dark and dingy. People miss, people make a mess, people don't necessarily think about that. And so this would not have been a place where upper class Romans would have been taking care of their business. They would have had a private facility or something like that. Structures like this would have been paid for by someone, but nobody wanted to take credit for this because, I mean, after all, if you're a noble person and you're paying to have this sort of thing contained for the middle and lower classes, you're doing this just so you're not having to sit next to somebody with lice, wounds, diarrhea, and all other kinds of health problems next to you while you're doing your business. Not to mention that this became the nesting spot for all kinds of critters like rats and snakes that were in there. Side note, although on paper, toilet paper was invented in 1857, it was used as early as the second century BC and recorded as being used as early as the sixth century in medieval China. I smell something funny. Is it because you just ate Taco Bell? Perhaps your stomach is not entirely stable. Not entirely stable. I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. So there you have it, the small and the short of the ancient Roman facilities. And it's interesting how far our personal habits have come in the past couple thousand years. I hope you enjoy that as much as I enjoy being able to bring it to you. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thank you from Swedish television. Good night.